Well, hey there, Bucket Pond family. I have a question for you. Have you ever seen a bladder snail like this? He has a forked foot or a split tail. And I think that's really cool. He kind of looks like a little dragon or something, right? So this is my buddy Tails, and I caught Tails from one of my ponds outdoors. And I believe that various contaminants are leaching into the water, copper or zinc, and uh, thus damaging the DNA of our bladder snails and triggering genetic mutations. Yeah, so I've captured Tails and I've brought him indoors, and my goal today is to create a whole new type of bladder snail using Tails as the progenitor, as the forefather. And uh, we want to get Tails to produce a bunch of eggs, and hopefully we'll see some with that split tail mutation. So for this project, I am using an 80-ounce, $5 glass canister from Dollar General. This is a great size for a small population of bladder snails. And uh, we'll be putting Tails in here by himself and hopefully triggering self-fertilization and giving us a whole wave of two-tailed offspring, if we're lucky. For this build, I'll be using some sea glass, which is beautiful. I've never used it in a jar aquarium before. And I'm also using some fluval stratum, which is a volcanic soil, I believe, from Japan. These materials are very new to me, and they are somewhat expensive. I'm not used to working with such fancy stuff. But we've grown a lot lately, and that has increased our bucket ponds budget a little bit. So we can afford a little bit of this stuff, you know, once a year. So my buddy Wheelbite did uh, notify me that this fluval stratum stuff here, this aqua soil, needs to be rinsed very heavily several times, or else it will make a mess of your tank. And so I did rinse it quite a few times, but I don't think it was enough. And I'm not going to use a whole lot in this build because uh, really I'm just adding this for the plants and uh, for some worms that we're going to add in the, into this build later. Uh, but this stratum stuff here, this aqua soil, should add quite a few nutrients to the water and should kickstart our plants. And you'll see why that's important here in a little while. Now, I should probably cap this off with the uh, sea glass, but I don't want to do that because that sea glass is really expensive and I don't have a lot of it on hand. So we're just going to experiment with a few pieces here and there. It's not sharp, and it is an entirely aquarium safe. It's inert in the water. And I'm going to add a seashell in here as well. This is a scallop shell, which has no paint or glaze on it. And I get these for really cheap. And that aqua soil is going to make the water somewhat acidic. And over time, that shell will dissolve. The tank will eat that seashell. It's really cool. And uh, that will keep the pH right around 7, 6.8, somewhere around there, which is uh, not so bad for our bladder snails. It should work out really well. Now, I tried to use that little cup to fill it up nicely uh, and kind of block the flow, but I just made a huge mess, so I just cut away from that. <laughs> keep that in mind, you guys. If you ever uh, get a little frustrated or maybe your build does not go the way that you want, don't get disappointed. Just try again. <laughs> So the tank's a little messy, and uh, yeah, I can tell that that soil is still clouding the water a great deal, but that's okay. Now we're going to add some water from a seasoned fish tank. It's actually from a friend's tank, and they have crayfish. This will be important a little bit later in the video, but adding that seasoned uh, aquarium water will help to uh, add beneficial bacteria and get our cycle running here in our little jar. So here's our buddy Tails, and he is very special. Uh, I don't know for sure yet, but I'm pretty certain that that is a genetic mutation. And uh, that forked foot is not natural. That's not normally how they look. Uh, Tails also has a slightly longer body than he should have. So, yeah, I'm very excited here, you guys. Uh, I'll be combining our future offspring with some other mutations that I might have off screen. And we'll be creating a whole new species of bladder snail. It's very exciting. But to do that, I need to keep Tails isolated in this jar so that he will not breed with any normal snails. I do need some plants for this build because they will help to filter the water and reduce maintenance for me. But I don't want to use any plants from our other aquariums as all of my tanks and jars are full of bladder snails. <laughs> so I'm going to take some material from our mini moss farms here, which is obviously overgrown with spike rush. <laughs> 
And that's great. Spike rush is a perfect jar aquarium plant. The moss that I'm growing in this little moss farm is also semi-aquatic and should grow, hopefully, in the new build. It's kind of hit or miss with the moss. And I'm just kind of hacking away at some of the spike rush. I don't worry about it too much. This stuff is indestructible. Uh, it's one of my favorite plants. It may not be the prettiest plant in the world, but it is very tough, and it will handle almost any conditions that I can provide. As long as it's in a wet or moist environment, it will do just fine. So we're going to add a little handful of spike rush here. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, it's the stringy hair-like stuff that you see growing out of that tray. And we're just going to throw that right into the tank. Nothing to it. Spike rush is very forgiving and very easy to work with, though it can also become a bit of a nuisance as you're trying to uh, handle it. Uh, each little spike rush plant is uh, essentially a knot of spikes. <laughs> very much like uh, pine needles or something. And I'm just going to hack some off the top of our mini moss farm and throw that into the tank as well. And there's nothing to it. That stuff will grow in there. I can guarantee that plant will grow in our new jar. And uh, I'm using this because it's not, uh, it hasn't been underwater. If I were to use our hornwort or something like that, it would be covered in bladder snail eggs and baby bladder snails and they would get into our build, and they would breed with our buddy tails, and they would kind of ruin my experiment or my breeding program here. So we don't want to do that, and that's why I'm using the spike rush, which has never been underwater. At least not, you know, these tissue samples anyway. So there we go. We'll put this away for later. I'm aware that a lot of people probably laughed at my mini moss farms, but I hope that you see why it, they are very useful. I always want to have some spike rush on hand so that I can assemble a jar like this uh, as needed. So this jar on the left is from pool pond number three, where we caught some very interesting worms. And, uh, you know, along with those worms, I wanted to throw some bladder snails in there because, you know, they're just important parts of my ecosystems. But I didn't happen to catch any from that pond, so I took some from the patio pond, which you may remember. And I believe the patio pond has been uh, infected by a little bit of construction debris. Probably some zinc-coated screws. And that zinc has leached into the water and has begun to affect our bladder snails. And I believe that's where these uh, mutations are coming from. If you look closely at the snails in the jar on the left, you will see some very long bodies and some interesting structures here and there. Tails is in there somewhere. I haven't yet captured him. Uh, but right now I'm just taking some of the worms from the bottom. Uh, these are very much like black worms, which you may be familiar with. I believe there's some kind of tube effects worm. And we're just going to carefully inject a few of them down into the bottom of our tank. We will most likely not see them very much, and uh, that's fine. As long as they're in there chewing up any debris or detritus and making fertilizer for our plants, basically, uh, then they're doing their job and that's all that matters. I also just want to get some worms started in some other tanks, so this is a good opportunity. And now we are looking for our buddy Tails. He's in here somewhere. Uh, we just have to watch them for a minute, and hopefully he will come scooting by. <laughs> so these snails in here, they do have very long tails, or very long foot. <laughs> I'm not sure how to feet, I guess. But I did manage to catch Tails here with my little shovel, very carefully, you guys, and I uh, was very careful to acclimate him slowly to this project. Uh, I didn't just throw him in there. I kind of let him crawl off of the shovel when he was ready. And there he is, exploring his new kingdom. Now, it might seem cruel to keep a bladder snail by itself, but many of you will know that one bladder snail can create an army. They can breed up a whole population on their own. And many people think that these snails are self-cloning, like some infamous crayfish and things out there in the world. But uh, these snails are actually hermaphrodites. They are both male and female. And they are able to impregnate themselves, which is really interesting. But uh, they, they resist the urge to do that. Uh, typically, a bladder snail will breed with another bladder snail immediately. But when isolated like this, they will wait upwards of a month or two before they begin to self-fertilize. And here we are day two. The tank is looking good. And uh, all I was saying there was that eventually 
they will fertilize themselves and they will create some offspring, but they don't want to do that because these offspring are going to be inbred. They're going to be really special. You could imagine two identical twins having a baby together and you could see all the different uh, negative health effects that would, you know, that baby would have to deal with. Uh, but that's what we're going to do here with Tails. He's basically going to be the mother and father of our future two-tailed offspring, if we're lucky. So right now I'm going to feed Tails with a little bit of Tetramen Tropical Fish Flakes. I'm adding a little too much, honestly. I'm going to overfeed the tank a bit. And that's because bladder snails, they don't really have thoughts like we do. They just respond to stimuli. So we are providing the stimuli. We are telling Tails certain things. We're telling him, hey, you're alone in your aquarium. There are no other snails in this pond. And if you remember, we added some crayfish water early in the build, and I've added a little bit more here and there for my friend. And uh, that water, that scent in the water of crayfish, that's telling Tails that, hey, there's predators here. And now we're adding a fair amount of food as well. So as far as our little buddy knows, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of danger, and there's no other bladder snails around. These different effects will help to trigger our self-fertilization effect that we are, uh, we are looking for. This will also help to accelerate the self-fertilization uh, ability that these snails possess. So if all goes well, Tails will be in here, and eventually he'll just go ahead and lay some eggs. <laughs> He'll be both the mother and father of these future eggs, and I'm very, very excited to see that happen, you guys. Um, I was going to wait to upload this video until I knew for sure uh, that we had, you know, spawned a whole new type of bladder snail, but I want to build some suspense. I want to get you guys into it, and I want you to feel what I'm feeling right now. I'm so excited. I I'm just eagerly waning. I'm looking at his tank every day, looking for some new friends. And you may know from different videos I've produced over the years that I have toyed around with the idea of exposing our snails to mutagens. I've joked about it and talked about it a bit here and there. You know, with the goal of creating mutations to, to make better bladder snails. If I can improve their, muta their, their genetics, if I can make them more interesting, maybe people won't be so likely to smush them or to hate them, you know. And that's the goal. And I just think it's so cool that we actually have exposed them to some mutations, some mutagens on accident. So here we are on day six, day seven. And yeah, it looks like Tails made a buddy. <laughs> I have no idea how this other snail got in here. The whole thing, the whole goal here has been to isolate Tails, to build him his own little aquarium with no other bladder snails. I was so careful and somehow this other guy made it in here anyway. It's very possible he might have crawled into the tank from a nearby aquarium. I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, my friend Clay suggested that we name this snail Sonic, <laughs> so that we have Sonic and Tails. Uh, but Sonic here, our little buddy on the right, we're going to remove him. Hopefully he hasn't been breeding with Tails, though they are bladder snails. They've probably been breeding like mad. And this may affect my experiment. We might end up with a wave of offspring that are completely normal. What we'll wait and see. But I will be removing our little buddy Sonic here and putting him in a different tank. I don't know where he came from. He doesn't seem to show any of the mutations that I've been seeing lately. So we're just going to, you know, scoop tails out and put him in a nice little Daphnia culture off screen and uh, let him live out his life. There's a good chance that he might have been impregnated by tails. And, you know, he might have some two tailed babies of his own. So we'll just have to wait and see. If this is a genetic mutation, I don't know if it's recessive, if it's dominant. I have no idea. So we're learning as we go here <laughs> with the best way that I know how without any lab equipment or anything like that. So we're just going to remove our little extra friend here. And if nothing else, this is a good chance to compare tails against a regular bladder snail. You can see there are quite a few differences. And uh, you might be saying, oh, hey, that's just a different type of snail. Well, yeah, it's a bladder snail with some heavy mutations. <laughs> I challenge you to find a picture of this guy online and to give me an identity uh, of a different type. You know, give me a species ID. You can't because this is a new animal. 
You might see other pictures of two-tailed bladder snails out there in the world. It does happen, though it's very rare. So I'm going to scoop out our next, or our new little friend, and I'm very careful not to hurt them. I don't want to hurt our snails. And, you know, guys, I'm actually pretty good with bladder snails. They are, like, kind of my specialty. I love them. I think they're amazing. They're, the whole reason I created Bucket Ponds is because I found an aquarium one day with some bladder snails in it. And that's where I came from. That's, that's where this whole thing began. And Tails here is the distant descendant of those original snails I found. And I think that's so cool. And uh, that just makes me so happy. But, yeah, yeah here we are with our possible mutations. <laughs> uh, but I'm just so excited, you guys. The tank itself is flourishing. It's still a little cloudy, but this is a bladder snail aquarium. This is not green aqua. Uh, this is not uh, father fish. <laughs> I'm not trying to build some gallery level, beautiful aquascaped fish tank. No, I'm building an isolation chamber to raise a whole new species of bladder snails so that one day my super snails can infect all of your aquariums and take over the planet. Uh, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Baby steps. I'm going to add a simple lid here because he will escape if given the chance. Uh, bladder snails will sometimes just crawl out of their aquarium, uh, presumably due to bad conditions. But uh, Tails here seems very happy in his tank. He's not trying to leave at all. But I'm still going to add a lid here with just a little bit of food-safe uh, plastic wrap, uh, the stuff you would use in your kitchen, and a rubber band. But I don't want it to make it airtight, so I am going to puncture it. I'm just going to make a little air hole up here. And that will allow some air to flow in and out. So Tails can continue to breathe, but he cannot leave. That's the goal here. And, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this tank, you guys. I think this is really cool. There's a little moss in here. There's a whole lot of spike rush. It has started to reach down into the fluval stratum. I'm just going to say aqua soil from now on. <laughs> And I'm very excited, you guys. So next time you see Tails, hopefully he'll be the mother slash father of a whole new generation, of a whole new type of bladder snail. And we'll go from there. I'll even try to mix in some other interesting mutations that I've seen off screen and talked with, uh, talked with you guys about a little bit in the short videos. So wish me the best. <laughs> Cross your fingers. And here we are. We're creating a whole new type of bladder snail, a new species, really. That's my goal. So big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Without you guys, none of this would have been possible. The pond that Tails came from was built with money that you donated to the channel. And uh, I think that's so cool. It's not all about the money. It's just about the support. And I really love our uh, intimate conversations we have in the members only area. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You guys, I appreciate your suggestions and your tips and things. And uh, for everyone else, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. You'll see more of Tales soon and other videos on my channel are on the way. Thank you.